Oh, we're talking about M64 or NGC 4826, which is the Black Eye Galaxy or the Evil Eye Galaxy. It's a spiral. If you want to see it in the sky, it's sort of halfway between sort of Boutes and Leo. But, I mean, it's beautiful, right? It's mesmerizing, it's mysterious, it has this gorgeous dust lane around here, which gives it its name, the Black Eye Galaxy. The reason that it's got this cool dust feature is because it's inclined towards us, so there's, there's some of the light gets through from the stars from, from the upper bit, but uh, down here where it's sort of inclined, um, it's gotta go through dust to get to us, and so it's a lot of the light's blocked, and you get this really cool, dark, mysterious feature there. This one does look a little bit more three-dimensional than some of them. It looks like it's got like a bit of fluffiness and bulbous. You know. Yeah, actually, so this is what's called a flocculent spiral galaxy, which means fluffy. So yeah, you're right, Brady, it does look fluffy. And the reason that you, you can say that is because you could stare at this picture for as long as you wanted, but you could never actually tell me how many spiral arms were in that galaxy. You could tell me it was spiral, but you couldn't tell me I can see two or I can see three because you can see hundreds, you can see so many. That's why it's called flocculent, this kind of fluffiness, which is nice. But the really interesting thing about this galaxy is, I mean, it changed our views of galaxy evolution theories. It changed sort of the foundation of how we thought galaxies were built up. Um, and not just from sort of its stars that we can see here, but from its gas. Back in sort of the early 90s, people were really interested in looking at how the stars and gas moves in galaxies. So this is what's called kinematics. They would try and see if they could observe gas moving in galaxies by seeing if it was red shifted or blue shifted towards us. So if a galaxy is rotating, you should see half of the gas of the stars are blue shifted towards you and half of the gas of the stars are red shifted away from you. And to do that, a really clever way is to take uh, lots and lots of images at really tiny bands of wavelengths. So you only let through a little bit uh, of the sort of spectrum of light. And so you, you take lots of, lots of little snapshots and then you get this picture of which gas is moving at, at which velocities. And so people did this in the early 90s with this galaxy and they did it with neutral hydrogen. So neutral hydrogen gives off at 21 centimeters. So they used a radio telescope uh, and they got this really nice picture of, of what the gas is doing in this galaxy. So what you can see is that it's colored here to show you which direction the gas is moving. So the, the red uh, color is moving away from us and the blue is moving towards us and so blue shift and red shift. And so you can see that there's this nice rotation that you would expect from a spiral galaxy. You would expect spiral, they're rotating, that's what you'd get. But if you look at this little zoomed in area, which is right in the center, actually this side, instead of moving away from us, is colored blue, so it's moving towards us. And that side is red, so that bit's moving away from us. So this central bit is rotating the opposite direction to the rest of the galaxy. What's going on? Exactly, yeah. So we call this a counter-rotating core. And this is a spiral galaxy, obviously, as well. So a lot of people think spiral galaxies, they're kind of left to their own devices. You know, they, they do whatever they want. They're pretty isolated. They're not really affected by other galaxies. And that's how they get this beautiful spiral structure forming. You know, it's never destroyed. But the only way that you can get this sort of disturbance where you have this core rotating differently to the rest of the galaxy would be through something like a merger. So back in the 90s, people were like, oh, what? <laughs> Spiral galaxies can have mergers too. That's against everything that they thought about how galaxy evolution and galaxy formation worked. Because it seems hard to imagine having a merger without ruining your, your beautiful design. Exactly, yeah. So when you have a merger, you know, things are ripped apart, stuff sinks to the center, those, those beautiful spiral things change. But now, you know, sort of like 2016, 2017, we've shown with simulations that you can actually have two spirals merged together. So people had to sort of reconsider everything they knew, really. This was the first spiral that this was really observed in. And the really interesting thing, this is just the gas. So that's just how the gas is moving. You've then got to think how the stars are moving as well. Two years later, after that study was published, in comes Vera Rubin. Now, Vera Rubin, she is like the godfather of all things rotation in galaxies. She was the one who first observed how the speed of rotation in a galaxy changes with its radius. And that was one of the first pieces of evidence for dark matter. You know, so this is, this is one of the big dogs wading into this, right? So she 
then took observations of this galaxy to see how the stars were moving. So she took what's called a long slit spectra. So you literally take a, a really, really thin slit and you put it over the entirety of your galaxy and you take a spectra, you split the light, and again, it will be redshifted different areas in different places in the galaxy and so you can see how the speed of the stars change. And what she found was that in the middle, the stars are going in the same direction as the gas in that sort of anti-clockwise direction. And in the outskirts, they're going still in the same direction as the stars in the centre, but that means that they're going opposite to the gas. Against it, the flow. Against the flow, exactly, yeah. So how do you have this beautiful spiral structure of a disk with stars going one way and gas going the other? And again, this, this added to this idea that you, you have to have had some form of uh, maybe a major merger, maybe what we call a minor merger, which is where you have a smaller galaxy come in and, and merge with a big galaxy, or even just like some form of accretion event where you took something from the outside and you added it to this galaxy to, to stir it up, basically. And that was, the, yeah, this was the first time, as I said, like in spiral galaxies that this, you know, people had even considered that that could happen, that they weren't just isolated and, and left to form these beautiful grand designs. So this is obviously only one example of this, right? So that, you know, you don't just want the sort of oddity in, in, the, in the collection. And so people now are focusing on big surveys to find more of these things, see how, you know, how common it was. We've realized through the years that actually spirals uh, can form from mergers and things like that. And so we really want to study these kinematics more closely. And so there's surveys of like tens of thousands of galaxies going on now that for each galaxy, they take a hundred odd spectra from various different places uh, and then they can get the kinematics and the movement of both the stars and the gas and so we can look sort of statistically across a big population of galaxies what is going on with these movements of stars and gas to, f to form these things and you know what's gone on in their lifetimes to make them the way that they are. Yeah, so it's always been called the black eye or the evil eye, but in terms of Vera Rubin, she decided that that you know, wasn't a nice name for this galaxy. It was too beautiful and it needed a new name. And so she dubbed it the Sleeping Beauty Galaxy in the hope that other people would also start calling it that as well. Uh, she said, I hence choose to rename it the Sleeping Beauty Galaxy. Instead of referring to it as the black eye or evil eye galaxy, as it has previously been called, I hope others will adopt this nomenclature. But you're, you're, you're not on board with that. You're, you're, you're more black eye evil eye. I think it looks like a black eye. I feel like that just describes it really well. So I don't think that's a, a bad name for it. So. No, you're, you're not on, Sorry, you're Vera. On. She's my hero, but... Star formation. And you can see in the galaxy as well, you can see these really bright patches all around. The ones where we can see where the dust isn't blocking. You can see lots and lots and lots of patches of star formation. So this is a hack. It kind of is. I mean, it works, right? It works brilliantly in that people more than a thousand years after he wrote this book were still using his method to calculate the positions of planets and it gives you the right answer.